Hello and welcome to another Artist Opus video. Today we are going to be doing red three ways super quick and we're also going to be popping in some information on how to get the reddest red possible. Now of course you might want a more drab red, we've got a terracotta in there, kind of a more earthy red, but if you are going for that reddest red, I'm going to show you some tips for combining techniques using contrast as a glaze and just instantly kind of bringing anything right 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 up to kind of Ferrari red, fire engine red, you know, whatever you want to say it is. Um, really really useful stuff really quick really easy and i'm only using a couple of paints here there is a gw version and a non-gw version so there should be something for everyone let's jump in before we start really really important point what red paints are we going to use now obviously when we go to contrast that's a different matter but these are two particular paints that I love. So this one is Monuments Pro Quill Bold Pyrrole Red, which is absolutely amazing, completely phenomenal range, absolutely love them. You've been seeing me using their white a lot, that has become my go-to. Um, this is absolutely fantastic too, great coverage. And the next one, which is available to a lot of people, of course, is Mephiston Red. Now, GW have a lot of reds available. You've got Corn Red, which is almost the same color, just a little bit more boring. This is where I start, no matter what I am doing, involving GW reds. So much like I have my go-to metallics, my go-to silver here, um, and I just add different colors to that to make it darker or bluer or greener or whatever it is that I want. This is where I begin for red. It's also where I begin for orange and where I begin for a load of other colors. So this is an absolutely amazing color. Um, it can clag up a little bit. And by that, I mean it can get slightly cakey. So what we're gonna be doing is maybe mixing in some other colors with it, even at the base coat stage, but still this is gonna be part of a lot of what we do. So first thing first, we're gonna go for the Mephiston Red GW Classic. Now I'm actually gonna be going from a black base coat and my first stage is gonna involve some black too. So I'm mixing my black and my red together. I've used my dampening pad and I'm fine with this mix being a little bit more wet than normal. I want it to be thin, I want it to be smooth, and I actually slightly over primed this shield. So I'm already worried about obscuring detail um, from bef before the point where I've actually even started really. So all the more reasons kind of try and keep it as smooth as possible. Fairly unsurprisingly, the next stage is gonna involve pretty much pure Mephiston Red. So I've cleaned my brush, but I've not kind of, I've not gone crazy with the cleaning of it. So there is gonna be a little bit of the black red previous mix left in there. I'm just gonna stipple this on and I'm going to be concentrating on the center of the shield. I will go to the edges, but I will go more lightly to the edges. As ever, as we go through the stages, we're gonna move from uh, pure stippling and kind of base coating techniques to more traditional dry brushing and edge highlighting techniques. So um, from the second stage in, that's when I start kind of introducing the dry brushing. Now I've got some Wild Rider Red on my palette. No, I haven't. I've got Evil Sun Scarlet on my palette. I'm going to be adding a little bit of that into our mix. We'll start somewhere where we're intending on it being super bright, which is the very, very center. And then at the point at which we're happy with the coverage, as normal, you should know the drill by now, we reduce our pressure and we take it more towards the edges of the shield. I'd say this is pure Evil Suns, but obviously we've got a massive amount of Mephiston Red built up in the brush. I've not cleaned heavily between stages, so I'm using that to my advantage. Top tip. So edge of my palette. Gently, I'm not scrunching it in, I'm flicking it backwards and forwards. I'm basically edge highlighting my the edge of my texture palette. This is one of the ways that I remove stuff between stages. So you can go to the dampening pad. Great way to remove excess before moving on to the next step. We are using Wild Ride Red next. Gonna mix it in with our Evil Suns. And this is probably the, this is the most noticeable step up in terms of colors that we're using. So I am gonna transition through this one. So starting in the middle, and then we're gonna move on to buffing elsewhere, pretty much. Super soft as ever. Our grip goes from here, kind of for power, to behind or on the transition of the ferrule and the handle. A little bit more loose grip and keep stuff soft. So I've actually got a little bit of Fire Dragon Bright on my palette. You could use any orange you want, wanted really. Um, it doesn't, doesn't particularly match at this stage. You're basically just trying to make your red brighter or lighter without taking it towards pink and orange is the way to do that. Okay, so now there's not any stippling going on. It's just 
kind of buffy edge highlighting. Very, very quick stages. And then the next one is gonna be pure orange. I say pure orange, our brush is of course kind of historically saturated with our previous colors. You can see that on the palette, I start off with the orange and as soon as I work it in, we're seeing the evidence of that. So this is one of the things that can you use to your advantage or can be a disadvantage. It's up to you whether you, uh, you wanna work with it or not. And then what I'll do is I'll clean my brush thoroughly and we'll go for a super bright orange edge to finish it off. Okay, so we've removed a load of our excess paint from the previous stage. I did that using the edge of the, my palette as I showed you just before. I've been careful to work off excess. Super, super light buffing. Not sure if you can hear the difference, but there's barely any pressure going on here. That is a kind of solid, warm, earthy terracotta red there. Now, part of the reason for it going that direction is using uh, desaturated, more pastel colors in the final stages. If you kept them super bold and powerful, so if you were to use Troll Slayer, and you were to add that to the evil suns instead of using this and then just use pure troll slayer for the final steps you could get something that looked less earthy if that's something that you wanted to do so serious business check out that bold pyrol red that is nuts isn't it ferrari's just landed on my palette as we did with the previous one i'm gonna be quite happy to take a couple of layers to build this up it is going over black you could base coat gray if you wanted i'm showing from black because i think a lot of people prime from black therefore it'll be very, very useful to a lot of people. And I'm basically gonna do a YP smushy. It's quite a thin paint in terms of its uh, physical properties. It's not gloopy. So I'm gonna do a kind of smeary smushy base coat for the first step. And that'll lay a nice foundation for our subsequent steps. As I said, it's probably gonna take a couple. However, as you'll see, the moment you're putting it down on something that isn't pure black. And of course it's, it's being put down on itself, which all paints prefer. They wanna, they wanna be laid in stages over exactly the same properties that, that they already have. The moment you're doing it over more red, it gets way easier. Third and final. So on my palette, I've got Deep Orange from AK. I'm gonna mix that in with a bold pie roll. And just as per the previous one, we're gonna stipple it towards the middle. Now, because this shield, although it came from a black undercoat, it's not came from a black base coat, we've not mixed black in with our first stage of kind of painty painting. Um, this is gonna end up way brighter, whatever we do, but we are gonna, we're gonna be doubling down on that by using bright, um, saturated colors. So these aren't pastels, they're just very, very bold, bright, in your face colors. Work off that excess using the damping pad texture palette, just take it off. You can take it to the edge like I showed you before if you want. We're just trying to make sure that our next stage is pretty pure in terms of the orange that we're gonna be laying down, the ready orange. Rotate it from every angle. There we go. So having cleaned the brush, take some more of this orange. And this is gonna be done on a purely uh, kind of buffy edge basis, just like our previous shield. Don't worry at this stage if your shield doesn't appear like super, super, super bright. We've got a trick up our sleeve and we'll be jumping to that towards the end of the video for kind of instant vibrancy on any red. So contrast time, we're using Blood Angels Red instead of my favorite Flesh Terrors, just for something a little bit different. They're both amazing colors though. It's going over gray here base now. Uh, top tip for anyone who uses a hairdryer to dry things when they've been primed, if your miniature is warm, I know it sounds like a weird thing to say, but if your miniature is warm, it will affect how the paint on the model behaves. And one of the most noticeable traits of that is basically that it will start drying out super quick. And I mean super quick if the model is warm. So if you are about to be painting the miniature that you're drying out instantly, I would really recommend um, either just using it on blow or leaving it to cool maybe even for a minute before you take your paint to your model because it will affect what happens and the most notable trait of kind of working on something that is physically warm is that it'll dry out your paint and then you'll get, with contrast, you want it to, to all be wet and then your, your blends are gonna kind of soak into each other seamlessly. If you don't have it wet, 
then what will happen is you'll get kind of partial drying because it's so warm and you'll get these horrible kind of um, stages where you, you've obviously, you can see one side going into another. So there's one dry bit on my model now. If I were to start working on that, I would cause problems. So that's one of the reasons it is both a good idea to work fast with contrast and to be mindful of whether your miniature is warm or not, top tip. So we're gonna let that dry. It's already looking pretty good, the joys of contrast. Now I think a lot of people wonder what to do with this stage of contrast. You've got some kind of tidal drying here, but you've got the beautiful fat blends that you get from using something so gloopy and so saturated. So one of my top tips is to take your contrast, whichever one you've used, and just involve that in your paint. Now this will make your paint a lot wetter. Um, and I'm using a, an already fairly wet paint, as I commented about the Money Bowl Pyrol Red. So I'm going to be working a lot of this off. I don't want my brush to be behaving like I've got wet paint on it. So I'm going to put a lot on and then I'm going to remove like 90% of that on my palette. Once you've done that, you are free to jump to your model. And this is the kind of, this is the magic I think of contrast is when you start combining it solidly with other techniques. It's not you can paint a model entirely with contrast and nothing else and that's super efficient but the moment you add kind of polishing stages literally in this i'm, I'm using buffing um the moment you add polishing stages to it i think that's really when it starts kind of jumping into its own as a incredibly powerful method so there we go super solid flat base coat um style and we've got some areas of visual interest towards the edges and we're just going to jump up a little bit now and still involve some of our contrast if we want for cohesion. Lovely. Okay, so we've got our three shields next to each other here. Now the, the kind of bold vibrancy of the contrast is really showing out, even though we, we've coated that with other paints lightly, but we've still used other paints on top of it. It's really jumping out as being kind of pretty awesome, I would say. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply, not to this one, we'll leave that terracotta, but to our previous one, I'm gonna use the contrast paint, I'm gonna use it as a glaze, and I'm gonna use that to kind of bring it up colors-wise, and um, hopefully it'll have a lovely end result. Okay, so I'm using Lamian here. I always get asked why I use Lamian over contrast. I um, I just jump between the two. I don't think they're that different properties-wise. Um, if any of you have any different thoughts on that, or any solid information, then by all means, let me know. Always keen to be educated. So I'm going to be making a super thin glaze. I do mean thin. I don't want this pulling against recesses much at all. I just want it to be a filter. This is going over the entirety of the model and instantly that kind of gorgeous, bold blood red, well, blood angels red, I guess. Um, it's kind of doing what it's meant to be doing and it's bringing it right up also retaining a lot of the detail from our previous steps because it is so thin. There we go, instant kind of like turbo red in a second. Now kind of notably, this has become by far the brightest red instantly. Just really interesting traits of playing around between the different colors and as ever, it, it, it's normally best to combine techniques for the best effect. It's never really ideal to go 100% down one path. Some things it can look great with, but um, combining techniques is where there's real power real flexibility. I'm going to take a little bit of white and orange, mix them together. This is on a fresh brush. I want this to be incredibly bright. I mean, it's already looking like that's not going to be an issue given how nuts it's looking on the palette. Work off the excess and get some more of the orange involved in there. The monument paints are quite liquidy. Um, that's, that's great. Uh, I really, really like it as a property, but it does mean that you have to make sure that you're not going to be taking a wet brush to your miniature. So once you've checked that you're not going to be doing that. All over, very soft dry brush, concentrating on edges. I could use a wipe for this. Um, and if it was the first stage of using a contrast, I would, I would use a wipe. So I do like a, um, uh, you could use a Corax white base because that's basically very light gray. And then dry brush it with pure white and I'd use that white because it's phenomenal. Um, but given that it's going over red, I'm mixing a bit of the orange in there. I'm basically just going to repeat our previous steps. So we've got our diluted Lamium mediumed contrast paint. And that's going all over the model. And because 
that includes the edges. Obviously less will go on the edges, it'll, it'll pull into the recesses. Um, but because that includes the edges, those edges that were kind of out of the spectrum of what would have been acceptable on a red for the red that we're going for, they're brought right back in and they just turn into really bright highlights. There we go. So this is actually my favorite way to use contrast. By a long way, they are super vibrant and they're just turbo glazes that are physically a little more thick and um, the results you can achieve with them are absolutely phenomenal. So there you go, that's my favorite. Now, one of the ways to make a color look really, really bright is to contrast it with, um, with different colors in close proximity. And what I mean by that is if you've got something, let's say you've got something that's really bright gray and it's next to a white, it's gonna look like it's gray. And if it's next to a black, it's probably gonna look like it's just flat white. Now that's just because there's something else that is completely different next to it. So we're gonna be making the most of that as a property by taking some of our contrast paint, mixing it with Holger Blue that snuck in here somehow. What are the chances? Working it carefully into our brush. And I'm gonna stipple this, smudge it down the sides of our model. Now what I'm hoping this is gonna do is it's gonna make the middle bright section that we put down where that hammer insignia is on our shield just stand out more in comparison. So not in a rush here, stippling it fairly gently, but I just want to add both a concept of kind of depth by having the, the middle bit brighter and also some, some contrast in terms of the colors on the model to it by involving this color. So I'm gonna take my time and buff it up and down both of the sides and hopefully that should make the middle look brighter as well as add some more visual interest. Okay, so as you can see, I finished them off with a couple of little metallic trim touches. And the reason for doing that is I wanted to show how much of a difference it makes when you put another color next to it. I've been banging on about contrast for all the video and just putting uh, some like the, the reddest red in the middle, I put next to a silver and that silver I've washed with blue. I've used, uh, I think Drakenhof. Yeah, I've used Drakenhof on it. So putting the red next to a cool color, just like putting a cool color on the kind of the outside, the shading sections of it, um, that makes the red look even more red. So I often say this, if you are looking to make your yellow look brighter and you just can't get there with the highlights, often what you need to be doing or should be considering is what's going on in your shadows. So maybe you should be putting a deep purple shadow um, in the recesses of that yellow and then suddenly both the midsections and especially the highlights are just going to get kind of ramped up just because they're next to something else. So I always bang on about contrast. It's all about what is next to what and how much it stands out and how much you want it to stand out. You might not want to have a crazy red or you might want your red to not look as bright, in which case putting it next to other warmer colors are comparatively going to make it look less vibrant. It's going to be less attention grabby. Um, so they're all things that you can bear in mind to get whatever end result you want. Um, if anyone has kind of other ways to go about doing red, uh, you've got other preferred products or specific reds that you think are brilliant, I would love to know about them. Please put them down in the comments. Please like, comment and subscribe and we will catch you in the next video.